come you again. I didn't feel you it for anything. Me to ask a mother their dead child. Say have a nice night. Go into his mouth two times, fuck his nose. You're freezing cold already. That's no space with me. That's what she had kidding you when I thought my head was. Jesus Christ, what the hell is she on? And you're just she's like, okay, what time tomorrow? Or, you know, see you tomorrow. It was nothing. 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 This is. Super unusual. In the chilling autumn of 2018, a lone police officer's steps lead him to a quiet coin laundromat tucked away in Wasu, Wisconsin. Little did he know what awaited him inside those ordinary doors would send shivers down his spine, a scene that would defy belief. Upon entering, the air was heavy with sorrow and the sounds of a grieving mother's sobs filled the small space. The officer's gaze landed on the distraught woman, tears streaming down her face. Her pain was immeasurable, and the reason behind it was a heartbreaking tragedy. Her two-month-old son, Benson, had tragically passed away. The unidentified woman was clinging desperately to her two-month-old baby boy, the lifeless form of the baby laid out on the table. It was a sight that would haunt the officer for years to come. It was as if time itself had stood still, preserving the moment when life had slipped away. The limbs had been immobilized, locked into shape. They had taken in the car seat that held the baby just before the mother's terrible realization. Yet beneath this heart-wrenching surface lay a mystery, a puzzle that would later unfold through a thorough investigation. The results? A shocking revelation that threatened the very foundation of the small town of Wausau. <laughs> On the eerie night of October 18th, 2018, Heather Gardner embarked on a journey to a laundromat, her mind consumed by the weight of unfinished chores that had haunted her throughout the week. With her was her sister, and Heather's two precious sons, Jathan and two-month-old Benson. Little did they know that this seemingly ordinary evening would descend into a tale of suspense and terror. As they were doing the laundry, Heather realized Benson had been sleeping the whole time which was a bit unusual for him. So she decided to check on him. What she discovered when she pulled the hat off sent shockwaves throughout her body. Heather wasted no time. She knew that every second counted, that the life of her precious baby was slipping away. Without hesitation, she began to perform CPR, desperately trying to breathe life back into her baby. Beside her, her sister, terrified to death, dialed 911. The frantic call to emergency services was a lifeline in a desperate moment. With a trembling voice and a racing heart, Jesse recounted the chilling circumstances they found themselves in. On the other end of the line, first responders braced themselves for a harrowing situation they were about to face. The nightmare that had unfolded at the laundromat was beyond comprehension. Heather later confided in investigators, revealing a series of events that were nothing short of heart-wrenching and surreal. Only minutes before they arrived at the laundromat, she had picked up her innocent child from a babysitter named Marissa Tightsort. Marissa, a 28-year-old mother of five, had been entrusted with the care of baby Benson. Pregnant with her sixth child at the time, she had returned the baby to his mother, cradled securely in his car seat. At first glance, he appeared to be sleeping peacefully, his angelic face in a peaceful slumber. Little did Heather know that beneath this facade lay a tragic reality that would soon become apparent, a reality that defied all logic and reason. The baby who had been returned to his mother seemingly asleep was now lifeless. As investigators pieced together this chilling narrative, the entire community was left in a state of shock and disbelief. How did an innocent trip to the laundromat end in such a horrific and heartbreaking way? The investigators faced the daunting task of reconstructing the events that led up to the tragic night. Every detail, every interaction, and every choice Marissa Tightsort made was under investigation. The chilling question remained, how had she allowed this horrifying fate to befall the innocent child in her care? According to Marissa, she didn't. When the authorities first went to speak to Marissa about Heather's claims, but not long after they found Marissa and her boyfriend Adam and their fifth child holed up in a hotel. 
When Marissa was asked what she was doing at the hotel, she explained that she had recently come into some money and wanted to spend a night away from home with her boyfriend. The investigators were not buying her story, of course, but they had much more pressing issues at hand. They proceeded to separate the couple so that they could speak to them individually. Once they got Marissa alone, they asked her to recount the events of the night for them. They had not yet told her that Benson was dead. This is a very important conversation we're about to have, okay? Tell me about taking care of him today. Marissa goes on to recount the day for the investigators, making sure to stress that he had been fine when she watched him. Oh, I was just watching him and you two was fine. The investigators then proceeded to ask her if Benson was fed. She said yes. Then she said that she took the kids outside for a bit when they were all dropped off at her place. She then goes on to say that she had been alone all day with the kids. All day until her boyfriend Adam came back from a hunting trip. Then they decided to get dinner at McDonald's. We went to eat a little bit um, after he got home. Where'd you go? McDonald's. Which one? The one over um, by the courthouse. Marissa explains they went in to eat, spent about 15 minutes eating, and returned home. The detective then tried to ask her if she fed baby Benson while they were at McDonald's, and Marissa said yes. He ate like four ounces. Okay. But yeah, he like eats every, it depends. Anything significant happen? No. We came home after McDonald's. Um, uh, we put a movie in, then like, I don't know how long it was after, but she called and she's like, um, I'm putting my clothes in the dryer and then I'll be there. And then like 15 minutes, she came there, so. Marissa was also asked if she had Benson ready to go when Heather came for him, or if Heather got him ready to go. Marissa explains that she had already put him in his car seat and she never took him out since his mother would be there soon. She also said the baby slept most of the day and he was only awake for a few hours after he was handed to her. She explained that she had fed him and put him in his pack and play. Marissa's behavior as the detectives questioned her was odd. She would laugh at inappropriate times, take long pauses, and use words that just seemed off. And then, um, are you okay? Yeah, I'm just like half asleep. The investigators were immediately aware something much deeper was going on, and Marissa was trying to hide it. At this point in the investigation, Marissa is informed Benson is deceased. She immediately breaks into tears. Why is he dead? We were hoping that you could shed some light on that. Marissa goes on to deny knowing anything about what happened to Benson, insisting he was fine when she handed him back to his mother. At this point, the investigators could tell Marissa was not being honest and they pressed her for answers, telling her Heather deserved to know what happened to her child. <laughs> then who did? No one. He was fine. During the course of Marissa's questioning, we discover this isn't the first time she would be accused of doing something like this. On two separate occasions, Marissa was accused of hurting a child in her care. In both cases, Marissa denied any involvement and claimed both cases had been complete accidents. However, the investigators noted that these accidents were happening too frequently and only when Marissa was babysitting. After they got a report about the second case, they had a nagging suspicion. These were no accidents, but they needed time to bring together a case against her. While they were doing that, unfortunately, Marissa struck again, and this time the child did not survive. So although Marissa insisted she hadn't done anything to baby Benson, her previous records with children and her behavior at that moment led them to believe she was lying to them, especially because she kept insisting she didn't know the baby was gone when she gave him to his mother. The detectives knew they had caught her in a lie. Heather's sister, Jessie, had informed them she had sent a text to Marissa accusing her of being responsible for what happened to Benson. I didn't know. I didn't know he died. And that's also a lie because she texted you and told you that he died. Marissa chose her next words carefully. My phone's off. But this lie also didn't work as investigators dropped a bombshell on her. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. I'll show you my phone. I'm seeing How do you think we found you? At this point, investigators are sure Marissa is hiding something. But the question remains, what could she be hiding? I'm serious. Now cut the... Marissa, this is the third time we've had a discussion with you about a child, an infant in your care, and now one is dead. 
One is dead. When Marissa continued to insist that she had done nothing to baby Benson, investigators tried a different approach. They offered her a way out, and Marissa took it. Babies don't just die. I would not kill a baby. <laughs> I'm sure you didn't mean to, Marissa. It's not what you do, Marissa. It's sometimes what you don't do. Maybe there was something you just didn't do tonight. The detectives are clearly giving her an opportunity to admit to it being an accident. I'm alone for too long. Marissa thinks very clearly about this, and she eventually takes the opportunity, probably thinking she wouldn't get into so much trouble if she admits to it being an accident. Unbeknownst to her, the detectives are playing her. At, at what point did you realize that you was dead? I don't know. <laughs> Marissa's response when asked if little Benson had died after she left him alone in the pack and play was very puzzling to the detectives. It was very unusual that anyone would shrug when asked a question like that. The pieces seemed to be coming together for the detectives, and it was becoming clear that Marissa knew a lot more than she was letting on, and Marissa finally broke. It was like, um, after when, um, like, before Adam got there to check them. Did you know that? But I didn't kill him. Although Marissa was now admitting that she had known the baby was no longer breathing when she handed him to his mother, she still maintained she didn't hurt him. She did go on to explain to the detectives how she found Benson. How did you find him? How was he laying? I put him on his belly. And how did you, how did you find him? I was like, just, just on his belly. Where was his face? Uh, in the, uh, uh, like this. She explains that she had found the baby laying face down cold. Did you check for a pulse? Did you see if he was breathing? Or did you feel his skin was cold? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was not making any noise. What did you think was going to happen? How they're going to pick him up? Shockingly, instead of seeking immediate assistance, Marissa admitted she bundled the child in winter clothing, covered his eyes with a hat, secured him in his car seat, and most shocking of all, returned him to the mother without disclosing the inevitable, devastating truth. Marissa was then asked what she thought was going to happen when Heather found out. Did you think she wasn't going to notice, or? Oh, yeah. And she was or wasn't. She was gonna notice. She claims she knew Heather would notice, but it was obvious that didn't stop her from continuing with her sinister plan. Marissa then goes on to reveal something spine chilling. Did you try to do anything to revive? Uh-uh. Try to see the other one. I don't know how to do it. She disclosed that she did not attempt to check the baby's pulse, get help, or initiate any recitation efforts. She admitted to placing the lifeless body of the baby on the hallway floor in her home while retrieving the baby's snowsuit from the car seat. Help me understand the uh, discovery there. Yeah, what, why didn't you call Because I was scared and my boyfriend wasn't there. And my baby. Uh, baby taken. Marissa's story takes a sinister turn. When her boyfriend returned at around 6.30 p.m., she chose not to tell him about the tragic event. Instead, she did something even more disturbing. She placed the lifeless baby in her car, along with her own child and the infant sibling, and they all went to McDonald's. They sat down and had a meal as if nothing had happened. The strange contrast between the tragedy and the mundane meal made the situation even more eerie. When Heather arrived, a few minutes later to pick up her children, Marissa decided to keep the terrible truth to herself. She let Heather believe that her baby was peacefully sleeping, a cruel deception that would haunt Heather later. However, the true horror revealed itself at the laundromat. Heather was faced with a devastating sight. Her child was lifeless, and the condition of the baby's legs bent at the knees due to being stuck in the car seat indicated a chilling fact. The child had suffered fatal harm at least two hours hours before the authorities were called to the laundromat. So, every time this happened, it happened. Oh. That's what I told her. 
didn't want heroin, actually, in any case. As Adam goes through his own interview with the detectives, some detectives follow Marissa back home, where she's about to demonstrate how she found Benson. We have these dialogues because it makes it a little more realistic as far as, like, facial shape and things like that. What I want you to do is just, like, walk through exactly how you put him down. So I put him in here and put the blue blanket on. But what was most shocking to the detectives was her behavior during the enactment. Most caregivers who find themselves in a situation where they had to reenact the death of a baby in their care would be emotional, as it would be a difficult task. Marissa, on the other hand, appeared unaffected and kept smiling and laughing. Marissa is then asked to reenact exactly how she knew baby Benson was gone. And I picked him up and he was really cold. How did you pick him up? Um, I just went like this. <laughs> okay, and what did, he, what did he look like? He was just cold. As Marissa reenacted this part, investigators noticed the same thing. Marissa was cold and emotionless, almost completely detached from the situation. This could have been because she was desperately trying to hide something from the detectives, but what was she hiding and why? As the detectives continue to question her, she gets caught in a lie. The detectives asked her if she always had the baby monitor on her when she was watching the kids and she said yes, until a little forgotten detail was brought to her attention. So it surprised you to know that your baby monitor is on the plug? Is it? Yeah. I might have unplugged it too, because you have to charge these, but I did have it on and everything. Why would you unplug the camera? What? Because, oh, I stopped using it. Although she kept insisting everything was an accident, Marissa was placed under arrest. I do have an arrest warrant for you based on your other child. So we're going to be taking you into custody. Can I smoke a cigarette? Sure. Thank you. Marissa was taken into custody for the charges concerning the second child she had been accused of hurting. As the investigation progressed, the autopsy came out. The result revealed the horrifying truth about how baby Benson had died. He had suffered severe head injuries and other equally horrifying injuries that indicated that this wasn't an accident. It was a deliberate and violent murder. Marissa, not surprisingly, was charged with first degree intentional homicide. Before entering a a plea she attempted to defend herself, claiming she wasn't a danger to society and insisted she was a loving mother to everyone in her life. However, her words rang hollow when you look at her criminal record. More information also came to light during her trial. The court found out that on that fateful day in 2018, after Heather had left two-month-old baby Benson and her other child, Jathan, in Marissa's care at her home, Marissa sent an unsettling text message to Heather around 6 p.m. A local news outlet had exposed Marissa's history of harming children. She knew she wasn't supposed to be around kids because of her previous charges, so she asked Heather to keep this information a secret regarding her role as the babysitter. Three years later, Marissa, now 31, found herself standing before the Marathon County Circuit Court, awaiting her sentence for the heart-wrenching role she played in young Benson's tragic death. The moment of reckoning was nothing short of a relief for the family she had hurt. The gavel fell, and Marissa was condemned to spend 40 years of her life behind bars. But that wasn't the end of it. She also faced an additional sentence, a separate three-year term, for inflicting harm upon the other baby. Hey, thanks for watching. What are your thoughts on this case? Do you know of other similar cases? Let me know in a comment, and before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. See you next time, and stay safe.